Good morning, gentlemen. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, thank you so much for joining me to kick off our new uh, project, which is the construction of the parking garage in downtown Stanford. Um, I'm just quickly gonna go over the agenda so everyone's on the same page and we know what we're getting into. Um, we're gonna go around the room and not just introduce ourselves, but also talk about some responsibilities. Um, we're gonna look at the project holistically and talk about some general points. Um, we're going to discuss the scope, uh, talk about what's in scope and what's not. Um, we're going to look at the project timeline of some high-level tasks. Um, we're also going to talk about some assumptions that I made while scheduling the project, as well as some risks. Um, we are going to look at some communication strategies and reporting that we will be doing. Um, and lastly, we're going to talk about any questions that you may have. All right. So I'm gonna talk about our AMAC team first. Um, Mr. Grimazola, who is the president of our company, is here with us today. Um, he is one of the key stakeholders of this project. And then you have me, Aparva, and I am the project manager. Um, we have Victor Arazo, who is the assistant project manager, um, and both of us will actually be working very closely with each other. We have Agostino De Leonardis, who is the site superintendent. He will be stationed on the job and he will be overseeing the job um, live. And then we have Agron, who is the money man. He is the project accountant. So he will be overseeing um, all the bills, payments, purchase orders, um, change orders, anything of that sort. Um, he's your man. Um, we also have two uh, representatives from the fields um, client team here with us today. Um, we have Joe Howell, who is the client project manager, and um, Joe and I will actually be interacting um, regularly with each other, just a touch base. And then we have Chris, who will be working with Agostino on the site because he is the client site superintendent. So welcome everyone, welcome aboard. Uh, let's look at the project um, overview. Um, I want to talk about our goal, which is basically to prep the site for the parking garage construction. And the client's goal, um, if I'm not wrong, is to look at a standing 500 space parking garage. Um, it is a six month long project approximately, and we're estimating about $450,000 in costs. Let's look at what we have in scope and what's not in our scope. So AMIC will be performing um, the digging up of the site, um, the setting up of foundations, pouring concrete, all that good stuff. Um, we will also be setting up utilities, which is um, gas, electrical, sewer, and storm lines. Um, we will be backfilling all the holes that we dug up um, and kind of generally grade the area to prep the site. And lastly, we'll, we will be doing sidewalks as well. Um, so basically, what we're going to be doing is everything ground down. Um, so everything that's the opposite of that, which is bottom up, is not in our scope. And I actually believe Fields is self-performing that. All right, so I drew up a tentative project timeline with some milestones that you guys can take a look at. Um, so, um, and if you look at the start date for the project it's not until um a month from now and the reason for that is i wanted to give us some time to apply for any zoning or construction permits um send out any um notifications to neighbors and authorities just to let them know that we're going to begin construction on a certain date um and then obviously the first um step uh, for our project is to um, bring in all the heavy equipment, excavators, loaders, site trucks, um, any miscellaneous tools that we would be needing to start off the project. And I'm giving us about two weeks for that. And then we're going to move on to clearing the area of any bushes, trees, and kind of getting that off site. Um, to help us start um, excavation. Um, so excavation and earthwork, um, it's kind of a project in itself. Um, and we're looking at a few hundred thousand yards of material that we're actually going to be digging up and exporting offsite. So I gave us a generous three months for that. Um, and then we will be moving on to 
um, foundation, which is after you dig it up, um, you pour concrete and let it set. So I'm giving us a little over a week for that. Um, I think we should be good with that. And then finally, we will be setting up utilities. So like I mentioned before, any storm, sewer, gas, um, and electric lines we will be setting up during this time. And I gave us uh, a little over a month for that. And that brings us to um, the end of our project, which is um, cleanup, which is, I think, one of the most important um, uh, parts of our project timeline. Uh, I'm giving us... Um, anywhere from a week to two to perform that um, just so we make sure everything looks squeaky clean before the inspection and if you look at the, the date for the inspection I'm giving us about um, a little over a week after the final cleanup just to account for any backlog just in case we're running behind um, we have that time to catch up um, before um, our internal inspection and our final inspection um, I want to talk about some assumptions that I made while I um, was scheduling the project. Um, so we're assuming that the subcontractors would, will deliver on time, right? This is something that's not in our control. Um, in the past, I've seen that subcontractors have done pretty okay um, with time, but you never know. They might have... Uh, an emergency they're not able to deliver on time and that kind of affects our schedule and budget um, I'm also assuming that we have appropriate manpower and equipment meaning I'm assuming no one's gonna take any time off no vacations no sick days everyone's gonna be working like a robot according to schedule and um, Equipment wise, I'm assuming that we have absolutely no breakdowns and everything runs in perfect condition every single day. Perfect world, right? Um, you guys know how um, dangerous the construction industry is and uh, safety is one of the most important aspects of it. So I'm assuming that everyone's taking safety measures every day. They're wearing their uh, protective um, clothing, glasses, um, hard hats and using protective equipment to make sure everyone's safe on the job site. One of the biggest risks for any construction job site, but especially us because we're located in the Northeast, is extreme weather. Um, I would say six to eight months of the year we're battling with extreme um, cold conditions. Um, my point is certain tasks in this um, project cannot be performed with um, extreme rain or snow because um, they're temperature and weather dependent. Um, so that might pose a considerable considerable risk to our project. Um, of course, these are all risks that I have um, assumed are gonna, um, we're gonna face during the length of the project. And I have accounted for some kind of lag in the schedule um, just to make sure we're never running behind if that ever happens. Um, I want to talk about um, our communication and reporting um, real quick. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, on a daily basis, the, the site superintendents will be doing um, time cards in this program called Heavy Job. They will be recording hours and uh, the work performed um, by manpower as well as equipment, um, just so we have all the information in a program regarding time, schedule, um, and different kinds of costs that we incur in a day. Um, we will be meeting every week for a progress meeting. I'm actually going to reach out to you guys um, later on this week to see what time of uh, the week works best for everyone. That way we can make sure everyone's able to attend this progress meeting. Um, we will be talking about how the project is doing and any issues that we may have had in that week. Um, during this meeting, we're also going to be um, devising a two-week look ahead um, and this kind of helps us to like it says look ahead for the next two weeks and prepare ourselves um, to make sure the project runs smoothly um, i as a project manager i'm gonna pull status reports 
um, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, depending on the nature of the project. And I'm going to be sending it out to relevant stakeholders. Um, that way everyone knows where we stand, how we're doing on the project, and if any measures need to be taken to make it any better, um, that's our opportunity. All right, um, that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, do you guys have any questions or concerns about what I talked about or anything to add? Um, obviously, you guys don't have to come up with um, questions right now. Um, if you do think of something later on, uh, please feel free to email me. I've actually listed my email on the slide um, so you guys can um, send me a quick email and we'll talk about it on email or phone. Um, thank you so much for coming out today uh, and helping me kick off this awesome project. I cannot wait to work with you guys.